Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today, uh, I'm going to take this thing apart. This is uh, a handheld, well not handheld, it is a hand powered um, grinder, grinding wheel. Um, it's got a, probably some sort of gear drive system inside this housing that um, that you you spin the handle here, and that spins the wheel. Uh, this was given to be given to me by my soon-to-be father-in-law because he's cleaning out his basement. He found this thing, and he knows I like old junk. Um, so thank you for that. I've seen these before. Um, I had the opportunity to buy one at a garage sale, and I I have a, a six-inch electric grinder over here on the bench. So this is not really something that I I would buy. To use myself, uh, but considering the fact that it was given to me, I'm actually pretty excited to take it apart and see how it works. I don't really know what my plan is for this. I don't know if I'm just going to take it apart, clean it up, see how it works, and then just keep it in the cool stuff pile for a long time, uh, or if I'll do a full restoration on it. I, I already went through my paint cabinet, and it has kind of like an orange color, and the closest thing I have is with gloss red. Um, I don't know if this was gloss red originally and the color is just faded. I mean, it could have been red. I don't know. It, it looks more orange to me. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to go to all the trouble of, you know, tearing it down and stripping the paint off and repainting it or if I'll just let it be. Keep watching and you'll find out. Let's see what we can figure out about it before we even get started. So I notice here on the handle, the hand crank, it says Genesee. And it's on the reverse as well. It says, uh, hmm. I'm not sure actually. Oh, you know what? <laughs> okay. Oh, that's awesome. So some of you may have heard of beer. It's uh, an alcoholic beverage. Um, lots of different companies make it. One of them is Genesee. Uh, Genesee, uh, they, you know, Jenny Cream Ale is uh, probably the best beer in the universe as far as I know. Everyone tells me it's the best. This thing, when I get it apart, when I start taking this apart and get it, start getting it into its pieces, I will, uh, I'll show this handle to you. And that's pretty funny. Um, so you're gonna have to stick with me for a couple minutes anyway. So I guess, let's start by getting the, the wheel off of it. It's a wee bit rusty. Let me zoom you guys in here. Put a little bit of coil on there. A little bit goes a long way because this shit is expensive. But it's the best smelling penetrating oil I've found, so. Um, give me a second here and I will get this off. I don't want to put pliers on the threads of that, but I might have to. Okay, I very ginger carefuling held on to the uh, stud here with a pair of pliers and I was able to break this little nut loose. So we'll get that off of here. Put that in the parts bin. There's a washer. So here's the wheel. It's whoop, it's not a brand I've ever heard of. It's Taiho gr grinding wheel, high quality grinding wheel, type A36Q, uh, six by three quarter by half. Uh, so that's diameter, hole, and width. Yeah, it's easier to see on this side. Taiho grinding wheel. High quality grinding wheel, uh, six, three quarter, half. So the diameter, six inches, the hole is three quarters, and the width, the profile thickness is a half inch. Um, I don't have any idea where this was made. My guess is someplace in the, uh, someplace near China. Um, but that's an assumption. Set that over here. There's another washer. 
this arm, this thing here, it looks to be some kind of like, like a tool rest. So um, I guess I didn't explain this very well, but this is meant to be clamped to like a board or a workbench. So it has a little um, screw clamp here and a couple of little fingers. So you would, you know, put it on a board like so and then tighten this down and that would hold it in place. So you've got one hand to crank it and then you can grind whatever you need to grind with the left. And this is, it looks like it's a tool rest. I, there's a screw here and a nut here and this is adjustable so it slides in or out and you could probably, you know, it's just a single point. Um, so you can you could rotate it up or down, in and out. So that's kind of cool. Let's get that off of there. So I'm just going to put hardware here back together so everything stays together. And uh, I'm going to put all these parts in uh, my little degreaser bucket. Um, actually, <laughs> these are so grimy and stuff, I'll probably hit them with a, I'll probably brush them off with a, a wire brush first and then I'll hit them with some degreaser. Um, all right, let's get this handle off of here. Um, so that's just a square framing. That's just a square nut also. Um, now this is, this may be difficult to, well maybe not. That's not, that's not the right size. There we go. Okay. Okay. So, our handle is off and now I can try to show you the funny thing or something that I think is funny. So this handle, there's a little, let me see if I can get you guys to see this. This has focus. So this handle here or the, the little shaft here has a uh, rectangular profile on it and that is essentially what the um, that fits this hole here and that it, it kind of locks on that I don't believe in fact I will say I would bet you one million dollars that this is not the original handle uh, because I don't know if you guys will be able to see that. Certainly not until the camera decides to focus. There, Genesee beer and ale. This is a can opener that somebody has drilled and flattened. And so here's a little piece of wood with a screw and a little, a little machine screw and a square nut. Let me get that off. All right, so that's, like I said, that's just a uh, piece of wood with a hole drilled through it, slid over the machine screw, and that went through this, this hole here on the end of the can opener. So you can see somebody here has flattened, you know, like one of those little bottle openers. You can see there's a little tab that you would use to, you know, to pop the top on your your beer bottle or root beer bottle if that's more your style but uh, that's pretty clever and uh, that's really cool I'm gonna have to ask my, my the guy I got it from the my future father-in-law what the history is on on this because I want to know is this something that he did did he make this handle for that or um, if not him who where'd he get it and 
did they make this? Because that's pretty cool. I, I don't know what happened to the original handle, but the fact that somebody made their own handle out of a beer bottle opener, that's, I like that. That is clever. So, I'll put all those over here, small parts. Now let's continue taking this thing apart. There is, there's a square nut, focus. There's a square nut right here. And immediately opposite that on the other side, there's a slotted screwdriver, or a slotted screw, machine screw. So I'm gonna take that off. But the, uh, the threads here, are pretty full of crap and, gr and grime. So I have found, this is a pro tip, not that I'm a pro. Uh, whenever you've got like old things you're trying to take apart, anytime you have threads packed full of crap, if you can clean those threads out before you even start to try to disassemble the thing, it just makes it so much easier to get that nut off. And now these threads are cleaned out so I can, this should come right off much more easily because it won't have to, the threads won't be packed full of crap. Uh, so that's way helpful. Now I expect once I get this screw out of here, this is a cover plate on here. So this cover plate comes up and off. And there's some some nice grease in there. When you crank the handle here, it is attached to the, the bull gear on the inside. Like so. And then the teeth on the outer rim here catch on this there's no way I'm going to be able to conveniently show you guys. So the teeth, framing, fuck. So the teeth on this bull gear engage on some teeth on this shaft here, right about in this section here. And that spins this shaft, and that shaft, of course, is clamping on the grind or the, the hardware. Words are hard. The hardware that I took off, the, you know, the, the washers and everything, that is what clamps, framing, the hardware clamps on this and spins this with that rotating shaft. So what I'm not sure is the order of operations. It kind of looks to me like, So the way this was assembled was this gear, you can see, you may be able to tell, there's a small shaft that I believe is, you know, is pressed in. So I think this was pressed in. They, how the hell do they do that? Because it looks to me like this end, this backside of the output shaft, the thing that spins the wheel, this looks riveted here. So I think they put this round collar over the end of the shaft and then they riveted the end so that way uh, the end, so that this is captured in the casting. I'm not gonna be able to get this shaft out of the, the, the body of the grinding uh, tool here. I think I could, if I could get this bull wheel out, this whole thing would slide out. Um, but I believe that is a press fit. And at this point, I don't really have any reason to take it apart. It, you know, everything seems fine in there. Uh, there is some grease in here, but it's all flung out to the side. So I'll probably, um, probably just scrape it off the side and put it back on the teeth uh, so that we've got good lubrication on the teeth. They don't appear to be excessively worn or anything, so that's cool. So I think here's where I'm at. I think what I'll do is I'm gonna leave this assembled as it is because I'm not, I don't know, it's, it's missing original parts, the handle's gone. This is never gonna be a museum piece. This is more of a kind of like novelty 
to be honest. Um, so what I will do is I'll start um, cleaning the old grease out of here, start cleaning it up. There's grease and grime all over the thing. Um, I'll start cleaning that up and I'll clean up the hardware and then I will put new grease in here and put it all back together. Okay, I've cleaned everything up, um, degreased everything, and I'm pretty confident that this was orange when it was born, um, not red. Um, so I am not gonna paint it red. So there, uh, I did <coughs> fiddle around with the, uh, the handle here a little bit, put that back on just to uh, just play with it. Um, so I'm gonna start putting this back together. Well, I guess now's a good a time as any to uh, put some more grease in here. I, I have two grease options. Um, I've got some Lucas Red and Tacky. Um, I don't know, it says it's fortified with with anti-seize, and that's good if you don't want things to seize up, I guess. And then I have a more economical, uh, more affordable uh, Molly lithium grease uh, that I got from the Walmart. And it is like charcoal gray, which is the same color as the stuff I took out. So that's what I'm gonna put back in. Um, just for continuity's sake. And I'm eating nachos for dinner later tonight, and I don't want my hands to smell and taste like grease, so I'm gonna put a glove on. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. And what I'm gonna do is try to gob this onto the teeth. It doesn't really do any good to have it like on the face of the gear, because that doesn't, you know, do anything. I want the teeth lubricated. So as I rotate this, it gets distributed. Of course, this is off camera. You guys didn't see any of that, did you? So the, the teeth of the bull gear, which is out of focus, are what engage on this shaft. And that's where the majority of your friction is going to happen, where the teeth mesh on the shaft and the bull gear. So that is where you need grease. So again, just getting the grease on my finger, and I'm trying to apply it, apply it, excuse me, to the teeth of the gear, not the face of it, because that doesn't need grease. You know, they say, you know what they say: the bigger the guy, the better the job. But, um, you know, this thing, it's gonna, I don't know. I think, I think that's a good amount. I'm gonna go with my gut. So now that that is like that, I'm gonna take the cover plate, and stick that back on here. There we go, there's that. Now, oh yeah. Good stuff, okay. Next, let's see. Next we'll put the tool rest back on here. All right, I will adjust that more better when I get the wheel on there and I know roughly where it needs to be. There we go. Oh. So this is kind of interesting, and by interesting I mean um, sketchy because the output shaft, or the, the, the shaft that spins everything, is like, I don't know, a quarter inch in diameter. But the hole in 
the stone is quite a bit larger than that. So you have to kind of move the stone around, you know, see, it's kind of weevil wobbling. So it needs a little spacer in there. I should probably make one. If this was going to be something that I actually like intended to use, I would make a little wooden spacer to go in there. Just so that way it doesn't weevil wobble around. But uh, let's see. Can you guys well, now watch the wheel? It kind of does on one of these. So I just need to, uh, I need to adjust this just a hair. So you can see that this is now just a matter of fussing around. Again, because without that arbor spacer to kind of keep things true and aligned with the, with the shaft, this is going to weeble wobble. It's it's not going to be. Well, see now I've got it straight, so it's it's not doing a one of these, but it's not centered this way. So it's kind of spinning elliptically. It's kind of spinning out of. Anyways, I'm going to fuss around with it and not bother to film the rest of that. I'll bring you guys right back. Okay, here I have the grinder clamped to a board, which is clamped to my workbench. Um, see, board, clamp, workbench. Very uh, high-tech, complicated system. Good luck uh, recreating this at home. Um, I couldn't get this centered properly and I fought with it for, I don't know, another five minutes and the reality is I'm, I'm probably never going to use this given I have an electric one. So <clears throat> I'm not going to worry about getting this perfectly centered by hand, uh, but I'll tell you how I would fix it if I ever decide I want to. What I would do is I know that this stone has a three-quarter inch arbor, so I would just buy a, a hole saw that would give me a three-quarter inch um, inside diameter, so maybe like a seven-eighths inch hole saw, and it would give me um, like a little cookie, basically. So I would just drill a hole in a, in a scrap piece of wood, a piece of plywood maybe, half-inch plywood would be good. Uh, because this is a half-inch thick wheel. Um, I understand that half-inch plywood is not actually a half-inch. It would be just under, but under is better than over. Anyways, it would give you like a little wood donut, essentially, that would fit inside the hole here, the arbor hole, and it would center on the output shaft. So that is how I would fix that. So this is ready to use now and I've got the tool rest here and I have a uh, crappy old um, chisel. Uh, it's a little it's a shitty chisel that I use for scraping grease and grime off of things and it's gonna be our test subject um, but just know that this is gonna be horribly chattery because this is not running true. Okay, yeah, it's like, it's way off. Um, okay. <laughs> it actually shakes the bench, okay. Um, so the, at this point, this is essentially unusable because of the elliptical fashion that this spins in. So I can't really give you a better demonstration. And for that, I'm sorry. You'll just have to live with that and just live with knowing that I will always carry the guilt for the rest of my life. Uh, anyways, I was not able to determine the manufacturer of this tool, 
I believe, let me unscrew this here, I believe that there was a, there was a sticker or something, a nameplate probably on a sticker here in this spot. You can kind of see there's like a weird outline here. Maybe you can see. I can see there's like some adhesive residue, uh, but the sticker is gone and there are no markings on it anywhere else that I could find. Um, so for a tool that is no longer really practical, um, this is cool to have because it'll make me appreciate <laughs> my electric grinder every time I see this. Um, I'll probably keep, I'll probably keep this just because you know it was a gift and um, it's cool. Uh, it's I'm never going to use it. Um, because this wheel has a weird shape. Whoever used it previously wore the wheel in a strange fashion. So I would either have to buy a new wheel for it, um, which you could do. They make six inch wheels. I could buy a new wheel. Or I would need a, a wheel dressing tool. And that would be, a, I mean, I would have to dress probably three sixteenths of an inch off of this to get rid of this weird kind of curve that this wheel has to it. Um, you know, I know that this, this got used. I mean, look at the wheel. A lot of, you know, a lot of it's gone. Uh, there's some sweat equity in this tool um, that you just don't get anymore when you use an electric one. So, like I said, I will probably never use this, but I'll keep it just to remind myself of how lucky I am to live now. So, I don't know. I, I don't know if this video was interesting for anyone. Because um, really all I did was take it apart and put it back together. I didn't show you the cleaning. Uh, I can't tell you who made it. Uh, I barely used it. Um, so this wasn't a very good video. Um, but if you know something about who might have made that or um, maybe when it was made, well, please leave a comment. I, I really would like to know. Um, I will try to find out from uh, my future father-in-law if, you know, if he bought it new and used it. I doubt it because he's not that old. Um, or if it was his dad's or, or what the story is. I'll try to figure that out. And, uh, if I do figure that out, I'll, maybe I'll put that in the description uh, in the, down below. Thanks for watching. If you're still here, um, I hope you enjoyed this in some fashion. I would love it if you would uh, like, comment, subscribe, that sort of thing. Um, would, give me some constructive feedback. Was this a, you know, a total waste of your time to watch this? Uh, because I, you know, all I did was take it apart put some soap on it and clean it up and put it back together. Is that, is that not interesting? Tell me that. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just bringing you along for uh, a ride. This is, you know, today's my day off and that's what I like to do. Take old stuff apart, put it back together better than I found it. So if that's, if you like that sort of thing, then you probably don't care that I didn't do a full restoration and I just tinker in the shop. And now I'm just rambling because there's a camera rolling and I've run out of things to say. So with that, thank you for watching. One of my favorite things to do on this channel is vice restorations. If you're watching this and you like vice restorations, I've got a couple of those uh, already done on my YouTube channel. And I am working on a couple other ones. Um, I've got a, a bunch of vices here. I'm actually actively searching for more. What can I say? I'm a man of many vices. So if you like vice restorations, uh, stick around. Definitely subscribe because I love the hunt. I love finding them, cleaning them up, and uh, putting them to use. In fact, I'm even trying to come up with a, a quick change bent bench mounting system because I've got so many vices and I want to use all of them, but I really only want one on my bench at a time, and I don't want to drill a whole bunch of different holes in the bench for different vices, so I'm trying to come up with a, 
mounting a universal mounting system. Uh, if, if I do figure that out, I'll make a video on it uh, to show you guys. Uh, anyways, I've wasted enough of your time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later on this old Tool 53.